Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight it is Friday, so we are thrilled to be able to open the show tonight with some rare good news. That doesn't happen very often, and when it does, we celebrate. One of the main problems with the U.S. government is that there's no way to know exactly what it's doing because you're not allowed to know. More than a billion federal documents, a billion, have been declared classified, and that means they're off limits to you and all other ordinary American citizens who don't work for the government. You're not allowed to see them, despite the fact they belong to you. Now, no matter what you may have heard, the point of the system is not to protect the country from foreign adversaries. Under the Biden administration, we don't even bother to do that anymore. No, the point of this system is to take power from the voters and the officials they elect and hand that power to the permanent bureaucracy in Washington. It's infuriating, and over time it is dangerous. But for once, we can report some meaningful pushback against this regime of secrecy and deceit. Kevin McCarthy of California became Speaker of the House last week, last Friday. And in one of his first big policy changes, he is pledging to let Americans see, quote, all that happened at the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021. And that means finally releasing the roughly 14,000 hours of surveillance footage from that day that as of tonight remain hidden. Watch this. Yeah, I, I think the public should see what has happened on day. I've watched what Nancy Pelosi did, where she politicized it. We're for the first time in the history as a speaker, not allowing the minority to appoint to a committee, to pick and choose. We watched the politicization of this. I think the American public should actually see all what happened instead of a report that's written for a political basis. And so uh, I think the answer. Yeah. We're looking through that. I want to be very thoughtful about it. But yes, I'm engaged to do that. Well, yeah, after two full years, after a highly publicized and a highly politicized congressional committee, after endless grandstanding in the media, after unprecedented political crackdowns, after nearly 1,000 arrests, after all of that, Americans, yes, they do have a right to know what actually happened on January 6th. That's what Kevin McCarthy said. Who could argue otherwise? What's the counter argument? Well, there is one, and Democrats have been making it in court, and that's why the footage from that day is still hidden. Here's an actual quote from an actual brief filed in an actual federal court by an actual left-wing U.S. attorney called Channing Phillips. Quote, national security interests could be harmed by the disclosure of the sealed CCTV videos from the Capitol. Once the capabilities of the U.S. Capitol interior surveillance camera, including its position and whether it pans, tilts, or zooms, is disclosed to the public via the release of a single video from that camera, the cat is out of the bag. So that's it right there. You can't know whether the Capitol's surveillance cameras pan, tilt, or zoom. And if you do know, America is in peril. It's completely absurd. Every human movement in the United States Capitol is recorded by cameras. And you already knew that because the same is true in virtually every public building in the Western Hemisphere. That is not a secret. And of course, it's not the secret the Democrats fear you might learn if you saw the tape. They're probably a lot more concerned about whether you'll discover how many law enforcement agents actively helped January 6th protesters enter the building that day. Some of them definitely did. We know that for a fact because we have the tape. Watch. Police are squabbling with protesters. Oh, there we go. And they just breached the Capitol again. So you saw the barricades come down in front of the Capitol. In some cases, it was not actually the police who took them down. But we still don't know the identity of the people who did. Why don't we? Well, Julie Kelly has just reported on a remarkable moment in the ongoing trial of a man called Richard Barnett. Barnett is the man photographed with his feet famously on Nancy Pelosi's desks on January 6th. Under cross-examination from Barnett's defense lawyer this week, a U.S. Capitol Police commander called Carnishia Mendoza admitted that unidentified but apparently highly trained agent prov provocateurs were leading the crowd that day. Here's the exchange. The defense attorney asks, quote, would it be fair to say that at least some of the leading edges of that crowd, they contained bad people or provocateurs? Is that fair? Mendoza's response, quote, it's fair. Mendoza went on to confirm that these provocateurs were, quote, highly trained, violent people who work together and coordinate together. Well, that's a remarkable admission. 
But who were these people? Under oath, the director of the FBI has refused to deny that these provocateurs were working with federal law enforcement. Indeed, Christopher Wray of the FBI has refused to confirm or deny that FBI agents dressed as Trump supporters and breached the Capitol. Watch this. Did you have confidential human sources dressed as Trump supporters inside the Capitol on January the 6th prior to the doors being opened? Again, I had to be very careful. It should be a no. Can you not tell the American people? No, we did not have confidential human sources dressed as Trump supporters positioned inside the Capitol. Gentlemen's time has expired. You should not read anything into my decision uh, not to share information. Director Ray, confidential human gentlemen's sources. time has expired. Well, that's just completely outrageous. First, it seems very obvious the FBI did have confidential sources dressed as Trump supporters inside the Capitol. But the fact is we have, as Americans, have an absolute right to know how many FBI agents or informants participated in the January 6th riots. Why can't we know? There's no good reason. FBI Director Christopher Wray wants to keep the surveillance footage hidden so we can't know. Again, the real secret here is not whether the cameras in the Capitol pan, tilt, or zoom. It's ridiculous. The real secret is what really happened there. So for two years, the Department of Justice has fought the release of this footage. But still, some of that footage has emerged. Take a look at this tape. It was obtained by BuzzFeed. It was released only after a federal judge rejected the DOJ's claim that this particular footage needed to stay secret on, quote, national security grounds. National security grounds. The footage covers a 15-minute period on January 6th from 2.25 p.m. to 2.40 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, that's right in the middle of the so-called insurrection. For context, 2.26 p.m. is around when Mike Pence, then the vice president, was evacuated from the Capitol. These are images from a surveillance camera at the Senate wing of the complex, and they show people calmly walking around taking pictures. Not much of a riot. Now, that's relevant because the DOJ is charging some of the people who entered the Capitol around this time, probably including some of the people in, the, in those frames, with endangering the safety of Mike Pence. They're saying the Capitol itself was a restricted area because Mike Pence was present. But it does not appear from that footage that it's true. Where exactly was Mike Pence at the time? People are doing jail time as a result of assumptions about that question. But the rest of us can verify it because the surveillance footage is still classified for national security reasons. We should see it. That footage might also show when exactly Capitol Police officers began CPR on Roseanne Boylan, one Trump supporter who died that day. And that would be important to know as well for her family and for the rest of us. We might also learn about why one Capitol Hill police officer on January 6th, a man called Khalid Johnson, was wearing a MAGA hat as he seemed to coordinate with some of the protesters. That footage was shot by journalist Ford Fisher. You're seeing an image of it on your screen right now. And maybe we'll learn more about the Chewbacca guy, the guy in the Viking hat, his activities during January 6th. He's the man now serving almost four years behind bars for declining a police officer's half-hearted request that he take the party elsewhere. Hey! Hey, man. Glad to see you guys. You guys are patriots. Look at this guy. He's got covered in blood. God bless you. Yes. You good, sir? Do you need medical attention? I'm good, thank you. All right. I got shot in the face. Where are they? I got shot in the face with some kind of plastic bullet. Any chance I can get you guys yeah. to leave the Senate wing? We will. I've been making sure they ain't disrespecting the place. Okay, just want to let you guys know this is like the sacredest place. More than half of all murders in the United States are not solved at this point because law enforcement, including federal law enforcement, can't get its act together sufficient to solve those murders. murders. And that guy has had his life destroyed and is spending 41 months in prison. Why? Did he do something we're not aware of? The surveillance footage would show us and answer that question. But big picture, if you don't want another January 6th, if you want to avoid another riot like that, you'd want as much of the footage to come out as possible. Instead, our government has been using the information blackout it claims is necessary for national security in order to do what they usually do under the cover of classification law, and that's lie to us. Joe Biden just claimed on camera that right-wing insurrectionists, racists, killed a Capitol Police officer 
called William Evans. William Evans, of course, was murdered at a checkpoint by a supporter of the Nation of Islam. Three months after January 6th, while they're still cordoning off the Capitol because threats these, by these sick insurrectionists continue to be profligated on the Internet, Again, all America saw what happened. What Officer Evans was killed defending the checkpoint it had to go through to get up to the Capitol because of these god-awful, sick threats. Evil thrives in secrecy. That used to be obvious to all Americans. We have a right to know. And moreover, transparency is the only solution. And it looks like we're going to get some. And that's thanks to the new speaker, Kevin McCarthy, and to the small group of Republicans who pushed him in that direction. Matt Gates of Florida is one of them. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. From Tucker Carlson tonight.